Hello everyone, and welcome back to Age of Doom. Age of Empires 4 will get 8 brand new maps in the upcoming October patch, namely Forest Spawns, Hideout, Mountain Clearing, Wetlands, Prairie, Waterholes, Mediterranean, and Oasis. Some of these might already sound familiar to you folks from previous Age of Empires entries, so let's take a closer look at each one individually. I'll also have some high-level camera shots to give you folks a good overview of how they look in-game, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's start with Forest Ponds. Forest Ponds is an open map and a variant of the famous Four Lakes map from Age of Empires 2. If you're familiar with the latter map, what's different here is that there's a large forest in the center of the map. You start the game with just one small wood line close to your landmark TC, and then you're forced to collect wood from the center forest. This means that aggressive players can cut off wood supply from their opponents if they obtain map control over it. As discussed, there are four ponds on each side of the map, and each pond has three deep fish worth 3,000 food to collect. And finally, each player has a sacred site really close to their landmark TC, with the other two on the edge of each side of the center of the map. Overall, I think this is a very solid and fun map to play in my opinion that encourages aggressive play. The second of the bunch is Hideout. Age of Empires 2 players will be very familiar with this map as well, as it's a very close variant to it without the palisade walls. You start the game with all resources readily available nearby, as you have a gold and stone vein, berries, very close deer, and ample forest to chop into. The map is relatively symmetrically divided into two, and you can easily wall the sides in a straight line to create two defendable front lines. They're not as bad as some of the choke points in other closed maps, but they're easy enough to defend to consider this map a closed one. That said, remember that the only thing dividing you and your opponent is the forest in the middle. This means that you can chop your way through to the heart of your economy of your opponent. Since microing down trees one by one is achievable in Age of Empires 4, you should definitely have vision on the center at all times to ensure you're not caught off guard. Overall, although this isn't one of my favorites, it's a good map for those who enjoy some relative safety in the early game. The third new map is Mountain Clearing. Now this is a cool map. It's kind of like a hybrid between Arena and Socatra from Age of Empires 2, where the edges of the map are fully covered in forest and the map is encircled with untraversable terrain, in this case, mountains. This circular map design essentially encourages an all-out brawl, as there's nowhere to hide or expand sideways. You have to meet your opponent head-on or you'll immediately perish. Funnily enough, the AI is instructed to build an arena-like enclosure in the early game for some relative safety, but the meta will dictate whether or not this is worth it. But as you can see, there's one sacred site in the middle that is too close to both landmark TCs, which further encourages the struggle in the middle. Since resources other than wood are very limited, as long as the resource generation is spawned fairly, this is a fantastic map that should be very fun to both play and watch in tournaments. Moving on, the fourth map is Wetlands. Another great unique map in my opinion. There are ample wood lines scattered across the map, and you start with many safe wood lines yourself. You do get close by gold and stone veins as usual, but you'll notice a nearby pond with tons of shorefish next to your landmark TC. Well, these tiny ponds are scattered all across the map, and every single one of them contains 5 shorefish that carry 500 food each, so that's 2500 food per pond. There are also some ponds with some random berry bushes next to it too, so this one mill that you see right now on your screen encircles a whopping 3000 food. Also, for those of you who don't know, villagers collecting shorefish is the fastest food source in the game, so the food is not only abundant in this map, but can also be collected quickly for some amazing eco timings. In a typical 1v1 game, I counted around 30 ponds scattered, so map control will play a big role in securing these as much as possible. That said, do keep in mind that this map has more wolves than usual around said ponds, and those pesky bastards sometimes even hang out in packs of three, so be careful with your villagers. All in all, it's a great map with tons of potential for some messy gameplay. Next up, the fifth one is Prairie. This is like the more open version of Dry Arabia, and I'm not sure how I feel about this one. You do start with a close by set of berries and a patch of wood line, and the rest of the resources seem further away than usual. The wood lines are scattered around and are very thin, and you will find some patches of deer and berries around the map as well. Otherwise, this is an extremely bare land that doesn't really offer much but open gameplay. I do feel like Dry Arabia is just a better version of this map, so I'm not really a fan of this one. Do let me know if you feel otherwise in the comments below. Next up is Waterholes. This map could be easily described as Dry Arabia, but with two large lakes. As per usual, the start of the game includes all the typical resources and wood lines, so there's nothing special here. However, as mentioned, both sides in the center of the map will have a large lake that contains four deep fish worth 4,000 food, and many shoreline fish scattered around the edges. Both lakes are very similar in size, so denying food from your opponent will be key. Apart from this, it's a typical open map that is a decent addition to the game. The seventh map should be familiar to some of you old timers, as it is Mediterranean. This map is originally from the classic Rise of Rome expansion of Age of Empires 1 back in 1999. Once again, the start is typical to that of most maps, with all resources readily available nearby. 
That said, there is a single massive lake in the middle of the map that has tons of deep and shore fish that are up for grabs. Since the lake is also really close to your landmark TC, you can also go for the easy nearby shoreline fish for a quick influx of food as well. There are also two trade posts on opposite sides of the lake, and the same applies to the two sacred sites as well. Overall, I think this is another good addition to the hybrid maps, especially given that the upcoming water gameplay overhaul seems so much better than what it is currently. The eighth and final map of the bunch is none other than the classic Oasis map from Age of Empires 2. This map is well known to be played a lot alongside Black Forest due to its easy boom and an abundance of wood. It's also a happy compromise amongst friends who like playing closed maps and those who like open ones. Once again, you start with the typical resources and two nearby wood lines close to your landmark TC. After that, you have to collect wood from the large oasis in the center of the map. As you can see though, you can cut through the forest to access the water within. Now, this part was mostly irrelevant in Age of Empires 2, but there is significant food in the middle, and both sacred sites are also enclosed within the oasis as well. Since cutting through a path to get through the wood lines is possible in Age of Empires 4 in the early game, this map will play significantly differently than it did in Age of Empires 2. The sides, just like hideout, can be walled with a straight line very easily as well to slow the game down and buy you time in the early game, but given that you can cut through easily will give a false sense of security for most players. Hence, it's too close of a map to be called an open one, and too open of a map to be Call the closed one. There are also a regular number of sheep scattered around, so don't expect additional sheep like you did in Age of Empires 2. Overall, this will be another fun map with twists and turns that is another great addition to Age of Empires 4. Well, that wraps up our brief summary of the new 8 generated maps coming later in October for Age of Empires 4. My top two favorites are Mountain Clearing and Wetlands, but let me know in the comments below which ones you're eager to play the most. I still have many topics to cover from the public update preview, as I will hopefully release the full balance changes summary tomorrow. Hence, be sure to like and subscribe to Age of Noob to not miss out on any future Age of Empires content. As always, thanks for watching everyone, be weary of the wolves and wetlands when you're going for the shorefish, and see you all in the next one.